No, Mark. It is not time for you to be dead. I need you to come back from heaven. So, right now, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I call Mark back for the work of the Lord. Mark, come back to your body. Whoa. <laughs> I'm back. You made it, man. Oh my gosh. How was heaven? Oh my gosh, heaven was amazing. Yeah? I didn't know heaven exists after death here. Oh, well, whoa, whoa. We got to tell the people about this. I think, I think you're correct. So, let's talk about it. What's up, That Supernatural Talk podcast family? We are on episode 25, and praise God, we are still alive. His mercies are new every day. Guys, we have an exciting topic for you today. What happens when you die? We definitely have to talk about this, guys. Um, I think if you're a Christian, you already know, but I want to build people's confidence. I want people to be 100% sure of where they're going to go when they die. And that's why I wanted to do this episode today. I truly believe I'm going to heaven. I know that because of what it says in Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, that we're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. You know, what he did on the cross of Calvary to save us, dying for our sins, shedding, shedding his blood and uh, going into the ground for three days, going into the depths of the earth, getting the keys of sin and, de sin and death rising again on the third day, ascending to the right hand of the Father and sending the Holy Spirit so that we can receive that free gift of salvation and become just like him on this earth, doing the same works and proclaiming the good news, which means he saves, Jesus saves. So I know by that I'm going to heaven. Ephesians 2, 8 to 9, like I said, we are saved by grace through faith, not in Jesus Christ, not by our works that no man can boast. But before we jump into this topic, you know, I got to let you know who's with me today. I have glory boy, number one himself, Isaiah Poche. Familia, I miss you guys once again. Oh, you're back. That's right. They ain't seen you in a little it's while. It's been un minuto. It's been a minute. Man. Yeah, it has. And we have glory boy, number two. We have Mark Jean in the crib. -o. I like how you said that, Mark Jean. Mark Jean. Come on now. What's up, fam bam? It's good to be here. It's good to be here tonight, Apostle. I'm excited. Amen. Amen. I'm happy to be here too. And, uh, you know, all glory to Jesus Christ for what we're going to talk about. So what happens when we die? Okay. So a lot of people have this question. They, they actually, that's, I think that's a big question for everybody because one day it all ends. I don't care who you are. Right. I don't care what you're doing. I don't care what you believe in. One day you will die. You will no longer be in this body. You will no longer be taking another breath. You will no longer be seeing people on this earth. You will leave this earth one day. It is a guarantee. The Bible tells us there is a day appointed for every man to taste death, to die. Okay. So we will die at one time in the, in the flesh, not in the spirit. The spirit goes on for all eternity as we know. So that's a question everybody has. And I'm sure if you ask any of your family members or friends, they'll, they're, they know that it's going to happen to them. It's just not everybody knows where they're going. Some people believe in different religions. They, their religion tells them they're going to go here or go there. Um, you know, in Christianity, we believe that you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. You're going to one of them places. That's it. Um, I'm going to heaven. I believe Isaiah and Mark, that's their plan too, is to go mm -hmm. to heaven. Uh, there's actually people out there like atheists and other people that believe you just go back to this earth and that's it. You know, and that's kind of depressing, isn't it, Mark? Yeah. To think that there's nothing else after this. It's kind of sad, actually. Well, you know? It's, it's, it's kind of like... Before you were a Christian, did you ever have those thoughts? Like, where do I go after this? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I used to look up in the sky and be like, if there's a God, reveal yourself. Like, 
I used to really like think about that. Like, man, is there life? Is there really a God? Is there really something beyond this, this, this realm? So I believe that run across a lot of people's mind. I mean, yeah. you live in this big old world and who created this stuff? So, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, the Bible says only a fool says that there is no God because mm-hmm. I mean, if we open our eyes and we look around, we know there's a creator. It it takes a creative mind. Even the details within what we see, like the atoms, the molecules, the particles, the 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 animals on the animals. Like we literally have animals living on us, you know, organisms, living organisms, I should say, that are living on us, Mm. that are living on another one, that are living on another one. I know that's Isaiah's playground. (laughs) <laughs> but you know, you ever think about that, Isaiah? It's like we we are so complex down to the the down to an atom. Mm. Wow. You know, we're, we're we're faith we're faith built like we are built by faith, men of God. So like when people say that there's nothing after death, it's just like everything that's been created that's here says otherwise because yeah. it's built by faith. You know, and like saying nothing's after. Death is a faithless future, a faithless life. Yeah. And we we have even bacteria, which is an organism. We have all kinds of things living in us, on us, around us, on the food we eat. I mean, if we really if we really get down to it, man, I mean, the detail is crazy. Yeah. So there is a divine creator. There is a God. I mean, look at the trees. I mean, look at that. I mean, even how they pull life out of the earth, even how God created this earth to even supply us and, you know, n- bring nutrition forth and all, all this stuff. Like, it's just the, the mind behind it is incredible. And then he created us to have these, these minds of our own that allow us to even create as he created. So we get to create on his creation, you know. It's uh, it's pretty so wild to think about. So this is this is how I know there's a God. I mean, I, I can open my eyes and see. If I didn't have eyes to see, I have ears to hear that something's going on. If I didn't ha- have ears to hear, I have hands and feet to feel that there's something going on. You know, so I know that there is a God just off of that. And and you know, some people believe there is a God, but they don't know about the afterlife. Mm-hmm. They don't realize that there is something way past this life. You know, I was looking at 2 Corinthians 5, 8, and, you know, it tells us that, but we are confident and have good will, and have a good will to be absent rather from the body and to be present with the Lord. So to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Wow. So the Bible lets us know that when we leave this body, when we leave this earth, we are to, we are immediately present with the Lord. Now there's different doctrinal beliefs on this. Some people believe in what's called soul sleep stuff like that, that you, you know, until the rapture happens, we don't go, but it's very clear in the Bible that, you know, we'll go even Jesus to the thief on the cross. He said, this day you will be with me in paradise. Mm. Like this day you will go with me. So that lets you know that, you know, as they both gave up the last breath, that thief on the cross by putting his faith in Jesus and telling him to remember him, he got to go to heaven, you know, and that's what we need to tell Lord, Lord, remember me. Mm. Don't forget about me, mm. Lord, Lord. Lord, bring me into your kingdom by your fa- by your grace. You know, as a Bible. Bible, yeah. So there, I mean, there's definitely biblical proof and evidence of heaven. Um, there's near death experiences that people have that are unexplainable, where they see uh, another world, another realm outside mm. of this one, and they come back and they're actually depressed because they experience such a love and euphoria in that world that it makes them miss what they saw, which is incredible, Mm. you know? So, I mean, there's a lot of like, there's an, I would say there's enough evidence out there to tell us that there is something past this, you know, there is something past this. Um, So, so when we're done on this earth, when we're done with what we need to do and when we go and we go back to the dust we need to have confidence in Christ Jesus because he is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6, nobody gets to the Father but by him. He is He is the way that we're going to enter, and he's the door that we go through. And through that door will lead us into all eternity, uh, into, into salvation. You know, and mm-hmm. I hope that as you guys are listening to this podcast, and you may not know the Lord, you may not know if you're going to heaven, listen to what we're saying. Listen to the things that we're putting out right here. You'll, you, you will have your blessed assurance in Christ Jesus and what he did at the cross of Calvary. You just got to put your trust fully in that. 
And you know, we live by faith, not by sight. It isn't by what we see that makes us believe. It's by what we know in our heart. By mm-hmm. faith, we, we just know that we know that we know what's to come. And we're going to be a part of that by the reading of the word and the reading of, you know, by the reading of scriptures, we know that we have something to look forward to. We do. Mm-hmm. I mean, even the, in, the, in the Bible, it says Paul knew a man, whether in the body or not, you know, he was called up to the third heaven and he saw things that were unexplainable, you know, things that he couldn't even utter here on this earth. It was so amazing. Oh, so good. So even he's letting us know that there is something uh, to look forward to even after this. You know, one of the things that is scary for me is the people that will miss it, the people that will go to hell because of their 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 lack and ability to receive that grace, to receive that saving grace because they don't want to fully give in to a God who loves them. It's their choice too. You know, I my prayer is I don't want nobody in hell. I don't want nobody to go where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth because that's an evil, that's that's an evil place and that's a very bad end. And to be there for all eternity is a very sad thing. So if you're watching this, put your faith in Jesus Christ so you know. Tell him to save you. The Romans tells us that all who call on the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. So call on his name. Jesus, save me. Remember me. I want to go to heaven. I want to be with you. Like call on his name and you and you shall be saved. You will be saved. You know, put your faith completely in him. Isaiah, was there ever a time in your life where, like as a Christian, you knew you were going to heaven, but you had your doubts about it? A hundred percent. I think when I first came to the Lord, um, I was extremely religious. So like my 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 salvation was completely contingent on my ability to live this life out or walk this walk out. I was completely independent of the grace of God and his helping hand. And we know in Philippians 2.13, it says it's the, it's the spirit of God or the will of God that works in us to do all things. So I was completely opposite of that. It was Isaiah's will in me to do God's will that I didn't even know of to save me every day constantly. But um, I think the, the shift was knowing that I will fail myself every time and that yeah. I am incapable of even saving myself just because like the bible says my righteousness on my best day is is filthy rags to god so it was like i gave up and literally let god like be god in my life and it's almost like a blanket it's almost like a chair like a very sturdy chair like you don't doubt the chair like you lean back and like you're comfy and you're like oh this is this is a good place this is a safe place and i by the grace of God, I thank the Lord that I'm I'm there now. But before it was, it was rough, man. God, it was the complete opposite of that. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, even in our salvation, the unknown, the like, what's coming, is kind of. It's still like, it's still kind of like, uh, you know, especially when this reality in this realm is so real to us. Mm-hmm. You know, and this is what we see, and we're kind of forced to like trust by faith that there is another place to go. You know, right. so it's 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 not easy. I mean, a lot of preachers were trying to make it out to be like, oh, that's easy and all this. Well, yeah, we have this blessed hope, this blessed assurance in Christ, but you know, at the same time, let's just be real. Like, you know, you gotta re- you gotta really have that hope, man. Yeah, like you can say, yeah, I'm saved, I'm happy, I'm all this stuff, and yeah, we are, and we desire to be with the Lord. But if you've been in this realm and, you know, you haven't been caught up or you haven't been into that other place, uh, which is called heaven, if God hasn't given you that glimpse, then we're li- we're literally living on the faith thing, man. Yeah. We're living, we are literally living with a hope and desire to make it in. <laughs> literally. You, you know, you, you know, know what, you know what helped me the most that like, like, I feel like put the nail in the coffin for me was being aware of the Holy Spirit in me. Like, cause it, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is like a down payment, almost like God saying, "I'll be back for mine." Like that was like, okay, okay. Now I know I'm out here by myself. I know that I'm. I, I there's something beyond me here, and it's and it's the Holy Spirit that we learn about in the Bible, and that I feel like that was like, oh, okay, ah, <sighs> oh, 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 okay. You know what I'm saying? That, that that was for me. Like the Holy Spirit was like, yo, okay. That was like my confirmation. Okay. Okay, the Lord got me. Praise the Lord. And as as I grew with the Lord, I realized, okay, this is what re- a relationship looks like. Because a lot of us come from places that don't even know what that looks like. So I'm like, oh, this is what, oh, this is what learning 
oh, this is what happens when I make a mistake. Oh, this is how he responds to me. Oh, wow, this is your personality. And as I'm learning this in prayer and in the word, it's like, oh, it's like, oh, and it's like a new thing every day. Yeah. I think uh, one of the things that really helped me is the, seeing the supernatural, uh, seeing thanks. the deliverances, seeing the demons that are scared, seeing the healings and the miracles. I mean, that that's that helps a lot because it's faith that activates that, mm-hmm. you know, so it's a beautiful thing to see that. But, you know, and with that being said, I do know there's something coming because I can see it like I see it happening. Um, but there's still the thing of like, I'm making it in. Mm. You know, and because I think that's healthy too. I think that's good. Yeah, it, it is. It is. And and we our works won't get us in. Amen. Just our pure faith in Jesus Christ. But you know, you guys know, and you guys online know, like none of us are living the perfect life. Let's just be real. Let's just be totally honest. I mean, you can try to be as perfect as you want to. You're missing the mark somewhere. Mm-hmm. We're missing the mark somewhere every day. Mm-hmm. So, like, we know that we truly have to put our faith wholly in Christ and His finished work. And that's it. There's absolutely nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. And I think our human nature is, I want to do something. And I think that's what makes it hard and makes us have this little fight sometimes is like, I don't have to do anything, but accept. Well, I feel like I need to do this and God's going to be more happy with me. Or I feel like I need to do that. But that's not how the salvation works. That's not how the cross of Calvary or grace works. It isn't. It, our works are not going to be the basis of getting us in. And yes, a saved life does bear good fruit, good works, right? right. Um, but at the same time, if you're not, you can even be not too careful with that, and you know, start to try to once again steal the glory in a way. Mm. We, our trust is holy, period, holy okay. on Christ and the finished work of the cross. That's it. That's the only way we're getting in is accepting that. And uh, fulfilling that, and you know, you're going knowing that. I think when we get to the end, and I believe the Lord allow us to know when our end is coming. I believe we'll know. I believe we'll feel it. We'll know it. Um, right now, we're still young guys, still kicking. You know, we still got a lot of work to do. And by His grace, we get another day every day. Um, but I believe the Lord will let us know, and we'll be prepared to be with Him. All the way. I think he's. It's a preparing thing, right? Yeah. It's preparation for going going home for sure. So good. That's why I enjoy this walk, man. That's why I enjoy doing what I'm doing because I know I only got one shot at doing it. Wow. I don't get to like go to heaven and come back and try again. You know, like this is it. This is where it happens. So I take it really serious. I take it super serious, and uh, I don't want to take it for granted, and I want to keep on kicking. You know, the thought to know you only have one time to live on this earth Mm. is crazy. Why take this? Like, take it for granted. That's so crazy. Like the 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 awareness, the sensitivity of time is is so big to God. And I'm sorry for cutting you off, man. God, but I mean that was so powerful in itself. I think people lack. I mean, I I think you're we you can operate as a thief in the kingdom for like you're stealing time for God. Like you, this is valuable time. God didn't just birth, uh, put you on this earth to just have kids and work a nine to five and then retire and live, live 40 years off a of four one, you know, four one K no, like there's, there's more. And um, I think just when you come to that revelation that, Whoa, hold on, I'm here to bring heaven down on earth. Mm. I'm here to be obedient to the instructions of the Father here on earth so that his his will may be fulfilled on earth. And when you when you set your mind in that state and you and you live in that state, life becomes so beautiful. Life becomes alive because now you you're not living within your desires, you're living in with within the living God, the one that existed, the one that created everything. And, and it's, it just brings a, a, a deeper level of satisfaction to life to know that, man, I am living for Christ. I am living in Christ and I'm doing what he's calling me to do. So I, I just thought of that. That was very powerful what you said. Yeah, I think that's why the Bible tells us to live as Christ, to die as gain. Mm. Life on this earth is to live like him. And our death is our gain Ooh. because then we gain eternity. So good. You know, so when we live in this life, it's just totally for what Jesus wants. And that's why like... We do what we do, right? That's why we're traveling. That's why we're, it's, mm-hmm. it's not to go and have like this luxury experience. I mean, of course, we enjoy the luxuries of going to another country and 
we want to experience it and stuff. But, you know, I always have in my heart, all this is fading. Mm. It's all fading away. London Bridge is going to fade away. Big Ben's going to fade away. The the Grand Canyon's going to fade away. Uh, the Niagara Falls, the the eighth wonder of the world, eight wonders <laughs> of the world, nine wonders of the world. How many are out there? Uh, you know, all that's going to fade away. It's going to disappear. It says that this earth, it's going to be rolled up. Everything's going to roll up like a scroll one day. Mm-hmm. So, like, I enjoy it, but um, I don't get my satisfaction in it because I know that it's first of all, it's not eternal. Second of all, I, it's, I'm not going to idolize anything on this earth. There's no point. And, you know, my goal is souls. So when I'm going to other countries and stuff, my enjoyment is within souls, within people, and getting to know people because that's who we're going to spend eternity with. Wow. We're not going to spend eternity with any of this stuff, our trucks, our houses, our cars. You know, uh, people store up their treasures on earth and not in heaven. People get all these great big houses, great big cars, all these things. And I'm okay with it. I mean, by the grace of God, I got a nice house. I got nice cars, you know. You know. Um, well, to me, you know, yeah. <laughs> to me, I, I'm very happy and I'm very blessed. And I got a beautiful wife and I have great children and great friends and things like that. So I really like it, um, but I'm not going to get hooked to it because I can't take it. Mm. You know, and people that don't know where they're going to go when they die, they put their hope and faith in these material things. Mm. They put their faith in money. They put their faith in all these stuff. And and it's just it's not going with you. Your grandma's your favorite. Your grandma's favorite plate. <laughs> even she's gone, and you're gonna be gone one day too. And that plate's still kicking around here until it's all said and done. You know, like we got the Great Pyramids of Giza out there, outlived how many people? The pharaohs didn't even get to keep enjoying it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So like, I mean, we got the White House. How many presidents have been through the White House? That White House, everything, everything, guys on this earth is going away. The only thing we got to look forward to is Christ. That's it. That's where our faith needs to lie. That's where that's where our hope is, man. And um, I hope somebody's watching this and you're getting convicted. And if you put your, you know, your hope in the wrong stuff, like somebody need to hear on this podcast to let go, like let go of that materialistic thing. Let go of that thing that isn't going to go with you at the end, you know, just let it go. And get ready uh, and prepare yourself for when the end comes, you know, and enjoy saving souls along the way you know one day we're all going to stand in front of jesus christ and give an account of you know the life we lived and that's that the rewards that's you know we're not going to be judged for for the for those things um we make heaven through christ but we'll stand and give an account and some things we did will be burnt up and some things will be great things for the kingdom you know (laughs) you know it's funny Mm -hmm. i think about it sometimes i'm like you know, we get these great videos of these great miracles and stuff. Mm-hmm. God will be like, that moment didn't count. But this moment over here that you you prayed for the waitress counted. Wow. You know, that moment didn't count. The moment that you loved your wife, that's that's that was a treasure in heaven. My goodness. This thing right here that we thought count didn't count. The way you treated this person, that's what that's what was treasure in heaven. So I think that's a lot of what's going to happen. That that person mm-hmm. you gave money to, that thing, like that stuff that I think is really going to be a determining factor mm. of like the rewards and stuff. I think it's going to be really, really interesting to see yeah. in, in that day. And we're going to be like, like Mark will be like, yo, I raised the dead over here. And, and God will be like, it was more for your glory. Or you didn't forgive yeah. your father. You you didn't treat your, the, your enemy. You didn't give him the other cheek. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And, but you're, you're casting out demons, healing the sick. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, to an extent, we we hope that we take forgiveness on, you know? <laughs> Man, God, this, it's crazy that you're saying this because I was going to ask you a question about this, about Judgment Day mm. and how it looks like for Christians and non-Christians. And, like, does it happen immediately after you die? Like, what is it? I mean, non, like? non-Christians, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah not, you, no, I think when Jesus returns, does what he has to do. But... um. When we stand in front of that judgment seat, the non-Christians are going to get the judgment. We're not. Mm. Uh, the great white throne judgment is what they call it. Mm-hmm. Um, we're, our judgment is going to be more so on, a, on, a, on good works, bad. The, like, what, what are we going to keep as rewards and stuff? We got more mm-hmm. of a rewards judgment more mm-hmm. than, you know, we, we, we're in. Mm-hmm. Like, we say by grace through faith, we're in. Mm-hmm. Like, there's the, I, the judgment was paid at the cross of Calvary. I mean, the blood was shed, but people, people, 
that are not believers will have to stand in front to get the understanding. They will have to stand at the judgment seat. They will have to stand for judgment um, so that they'll understand, like, you're judged in this. You know, that some people are going to hear guilty, and they're going to be like, no, I wasn't guilty. I did this good thing, and I did that good thing. Lord, how could you? I mean, uh, why would you send me away, God, blah, blah, blah? And he'll be like, look, I gave you a way out, but mm. you rejected it. And because you rejected it, now look at this. This is what, look, you, did, you, you, you tried to carry all this stuff. And because you didn't this, now here's this, you know? So the non-believer is going to have it pretty tough. And they're right. going to have a real, real awakening moment. They're going to have an awakening moment of like, oh, man, this thing was real the whole time. <laughs> That's the scary part, right? Um, but no, I don't believe we believers are going to st- like going to you know, be judged in the same way as an unbeliever. Definitely not. That judgment, that's a whole different thing because we're covered in the blood. Jesus, God sees his son when he sees us, you know? Mm, and his son is, you know, his son took the sins of the world on the cross. So and I guess that answers your question, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and does it happen after we die immediately? Um, I don't think it's like right after we die. I think it. Uh, the whole world. There's, there's going to be time. There's going to be a time where, where the whole, the whole of creation will have to go through that. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, There'll be a select day. Yeah, I think so. So whether you you die today or next week, unless that day comes, it won't happen. I, I, and I know when we leave this body, man. I mean, time is not quite in the same spectrum. You know what I'm right, saying? No, yeah, yeah, facts, facts. It's a little bit different. Like. Gross, everything's quick mm-hmm. you know like when we go up to heaven and we see our loved ones and stuff they're gonna be like hey you got here quick you know what i mean mm-hmm. it's not gonna be like crazy overtime or something so yeah i um i know after this is heaven and i know the only way we get there is through christ and through christ alone before we get to the end of this though i want to ask you isaiah what kind of creatures you think's up there Kind of like creatures, yeah. Man of God, I've I told you I've had like a dream of heaven. I've told you that, right? Uh, uh, you are telling me now? You didn't know that? I told you that. You just don't remember. But mm-hmm. I had a I had a dream of heaven. And you know, like the sunset, like the color of the sunset mm-hmm. on a normal day. That's how like the like the clouds are like under you, and like that's how the clouds look. So like, I. <sighs> Man of God, I think there's gonna be animals that we've never seen before. Exactly, like different types of birds, different types of four-legged, five-legged, six, seven, eight-legged creatures, like <laughs> with like a trillion eyes, like a bunch of ears, like <laughs> you can't even. Because think about it, like here on Earth, like we we create these pictures of these things and these video games and like these different pieces of art, and like God is like the ultimate creator. So yeah. like. If we can come up with such abstract, like, just, like, mind-blowing, whoa, I can only imagine the infinite, all-knowing, artistic, ultra-Picasso, what he would do, you know? So, like, I can't even put the answer into words. I'd just be like, you know, that's that's my best response to you, man. God, that's my best response to you. What do you think? No, I think the same. I think pretty much the same. There's going to be things that we can't even fathom. I mean, that's why Paul said... I knew a man, and he couldn't utter the, some of the things that he saw, you know? Mm-hmm. So heaven's something to look forward to. You know, what happens when we die? Well, I think you just figured it out because we just talked about it, yeah. you know? You hopefully go to heaven. That's what, what hopefully happens when you die. So have no fear of death, guys. I've given you the solution. I'll give it to you again. Call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Be your bestest friend. Ask him to save you. And then be baptized in water and the Holy Ghost and move on until you get to where you need to go you know but anyway guys this has been episode 25 of that supernatural talk podcast i love you guys tremendously i can't thank you enough um if this is your first time watching this channel make sure you subscribe hit the notification bell so you can be notified of every video that comes out hit the like button share and also comment talk to us where do you think what do you think happens when you die? Hopefully you're a Christian. If not, give me your perspective. Are you sure 
that there's an afterlife? Are you sure that you're going to go to heaven? Do you believe Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and the only way to get to heaven? He's the only way to get to the Father. It's by Him, right? So what do you believe? We, we want to talk to you guys. We want to you know respond to you in the comments and stuff like that. So make sure that you guys are commenting, engaging, and let's continue to build this awesome Supernatural Talk podcast family here on YouTube. And also, um, if you're listening on the podcast channel, God bless you guys. It's good to have you as listeners. Hope you're enjoying you're enjoying all the content that we are putting out. But also, guys, I want to let you know there's various ways you can get involved with the ministry. You can go to www. The supernaturallife.org. All information is on there. You can become a forerunner and you can also find ways to give and be a part of what we're doing here at the supernatural life all over the world. So, anyway, hey guys, that's all. Shout out, Glory Boy number one and two. Thank you guys for being a part of what we're doing here at the supernatural life and that supernatural talk podcast. And guys, I will see you soon. In Jesus' name.